So I polled Instagram this week and this was by far the most popular topic. And I really wish it wasn't, but I guess we're not going to see change if we don't talk about it, right? In a world full of misogynists, why do women still feel the need to tear each other down? Don't we have enough trouble already? I'm Kamna and I'm going to make you a little uncomfortable. Don't mind it. I am a feminist. I love women. I support women. I am raising a woman. And that will not stop me from saying that women can sometimes be real assholes to each other. So in order to comprehend what's fully going on, I think we need to look at all the various pieces. We need to consider the evolutionary perspective. We need to talk about social mechanisms because not one of these things will explain the phenomenon, but each of them contributes in a different way. So let's start with the evolutionary perspective. That's pretty simple. Surprise. It's about the perpetuation of the species, about making babies. Uh, hotter women get more men, more promiscuous women get more men. So they're worthy of a good takedown. And for men, aggression is supposed to be overt, you know, testosterone and all that jazz. But for women, it has to be more covert. The rules are different and tends to be more relational with social exclusion and slandering, a.k.a. gossip. And when it takes a village to raise your children, but the whole town thinks you're the village hoe, it doesn't bode so well for your offspring. And the research supports that women are more attuned to social exclusion cues than men are. Shocker when they're being excluded. So, you know, mission accomplished. Now, like I said, it's only part of the story, basic instincts. The other big piece is social learning. Studies show that women who are raised by mothers who are mean-spirited or antagonistic towards other women tend to adopt those attitudes unless they have the self-awareness to break those patterns. Think of the implications for raising daughters and think of the atrocities against girls around the world female genital mutilation in parts of Africa, the ancient tradition of foot binding in China, dowry deaths in India. Very often, the perpetrators are women, mothers, mothers-in-law, elder women of the community. That's a really powerful, and I'm sorry, fucked up message going down to the next generation, isn't it? Another theory argued by some feminists is that women turn against each other because they are jockeying for pole position in a male-dominated world. So the system is the enemy, not necessarily the individual perpetrators. And I buy that to some degree. That reminds me of feminism of the 80s, when women shunned all things woman, including other women. Now, the only good thing we got from that stage was shoulder pads, really, not much else. And the research also suggests then that high-powered and attractive women who succeed in that system are not particularly invested in bringing other women up. That's a very problematic piece of the puzzle. Now, I went to an all-women's college, and I always joke that after that, men are a cakewalk. And granted, some of my best friends have come out of those four years, but I also saw some of the most vicious bullying, exclusionism, and emotional manipulation that you'll ever see. I mean, this is the shit horror movies are made of. And there were no men really to speak of to mess up the dynamic. So why? Turns out, we criticize in others what we perceive as a lack in ourselves. Pretty human trait, actually, not restricted to women. It's why we instinctively dismiss the blonde with the nice long legs or the domestic goddess making sourdough bread from scratch at home or the kick-ass and take names corporate partner. As human beings, we like to categorize and create hierarchies for comparison so we know where we stand. And it seems for women, when we feel like we're lacking, we like to target people above us on this so-called hierarchy. Pause for a minute and see if that feels true for you. I know it feels true for me. For me, it's not so much about looks or money or climbing up the corporate ladder. It's about how much space you take in a room. My ruling star is the sun, so I need to shine bright. So anybody that's threatening to eclipse my light, I'm gonna get defensive about. For you, it might be looks. For you, it might be career. For you, it might be intelligence. But think about what kind of reaction that triggers for you. What I'm getting at is before we can go out to tackle the mean girls outside, we have to neutralize the one within. And I like the strategy of attend and befriend for this. I mean, what does this crazy bitch actually need? So I created a little flowchart. Four simple steps to neutralize the mean bitch inside you. I mean, the mean girl. I mean, the hurting child. Whatever. 
first step, as you can see, is the actual inquiry. Am I the main girl in this situation? If you think you're not, great, this time around. But make sure to ask yourself that over and over again in different scenarios. If you've decided that it is you, that's tough. But at least you know now. So we move on to the next stage, which is prepping yourself to actually deal with those demons. Are you ready to engage? If you're not, you gotta brace yourself, work a little bit harder because this is important work. If you are ready to engage, buckle up. It's gonna hurt a little bit, but it's gonna be totally worth it. In the excavation phase, you really poke into the places that hurt. Where is the pain? Where is this lack of confidence in myself coming from? What is it I believe I want to be that I don't have? And what is it about this person that triggers that for me? You can do this via therapy, discovering your spirituality, but the work is around self-worth and self-esteem and uncovering trauma that you might be carrying around for many years. And once the work is done, and it may take years, and it's repetitive work, you feel better, which is great, because then you can be nicer to you and you can be nicer to women around you. Yay! The good news is that with some hard work and some self-awareness, you can overcome this. It's not easy, it's constant and daily effort, but the rewards are totally worth it. And the cost, frankly, just too high. And then we can go out and tackle the rest of them. One mean girl at a time. Until there are none left. Thank you.